Good evening. I'm Greg Sharp, and here is tonight's sports ticker. Husker baseball coach Will Bull made it official today with the announcement of former Texas A&M head coach and former Husker assistant coach Rob Childress as the new director of player development for the Big Red. Childress was an assistant at Nebraska from 1998 to 2005 before taking over the helm at A&M, where he guided the Aggie program for 16 seasons, including two appearances at the College World Series in Omaha. Nebraska quarterback Adrian Martinez's name is on the watch list for the Maxwell Award. That honor is given out each year to the college football player of the year. Martinez enters the season with 13 school records already under his name. Nebraska athletics will have seven athletes representing four different countries at the upcoming Olympic Games in Tokyo. Four former Husker foot volleyball players will be competing. Sarah Pavin will be involved in beach volleyball with Jordan Larson. Kelsey Robinson and Justine Wong Haranches, part of the U.S. Women's Volleyball Squad. Beatrice Padron is an incoming freshman swimmer. She will compete for Costa Rica. Keishi Tominaga, a new addition for Fred Hoiberg's basketball team, will compete for Japan in the three-on-three basketball competition. And Amber Parkinson Nevin, a former track athlete, will take part in road cycling. Checking the Major League scoreboard, game one of two in Chicago. The White Sox twins tied at one on the sixth. Just about to get in the way, the Marlins at the Nationals, the Red Sox at the Blue Jays, the Mets at the Reds, and the Orioles at the Rays. With later tonight, the Rangers visiting Detroit. Game two of that Twins-White Sox series, San Diego in Atlanta to take on the Braves. Cleveland and Houston, the Cubs visiting the Cardinals in that longtime rivalry. The Angels will be at the Athletics later tonight, along with the Pirates, Diamondbacks, and Giants-Dodgers from Chavez Ravine in Los Angeles. Those are tonight's Sports Headlines, I'm Greg Sharp. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Little chopper, right back to Schwellenbach, throws to first, in time. Huskers make it nine in a row as they take game one. A terrific pitching performance on both sides for Nebraska. Povich, Buns, Schwellenbach combine on the shutout. Povich gets the win. Schwellenbach is eighth save, and Nebraska takes game one of this series, a final of one to nothing. Povich was as good as I've ever seen him today. The fastball had life to it. The changeup had a lot of late life to it as well. Looking the same out of the hand. He threw the curveball, the slider, and the cutter. I mean, he had he threw five different pitches today, all for strikes. Very competitive. Looked like an ace, and we needed every bit of it today. Sports Nightly is brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Transportation Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to another week of Sports Island. We are 40 days, Jessica. Wow. 40 days from kickoff. How about that? It's, uh, yeah, and t- what, less than two weeks now from the first day of fall camp. So, welcome days. back, by the way. Good to be back. Good to be back. Missed no, you, uh, but. Well, thank you. And thank you, you for filling in the last couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, thanks to Bill Dolman for helping out as well. But you've rested and rejuvenated. A little bit. You know, I, I've, I've, I've talked about this a little bit in the past, that it was kind of a working vacation. For the last eight years, I have had the privilege and the honor of being the, the MC for the National Strength Coaches Association National Convention. It's the NSCA, founded by our very own Boyd Epley, the godfather of weightlifting for sports, and they're in their 44th year. They have their conference, and they move it around. This year it was in Orlando. It's usually in Vegas or New Orleans. They, they just pop it around the country. But Boyd got me involved in it about eight years ago. It's 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 got root the it's began here in nebraska this is that's where that association now it's got over thirty three thousand members wow. worldwide they're in australia new zealand europe japan canada a lot of the foreign folks couldn't come this year because of covid but they still had over 800 at the conference and they had about another 800 that signed up for the online version of it but uh it's it's something nebraska should be proud of because it's it again it began here boyd was the the he was the first executive director for that organization. Several big-time Nebraska people were honored at the convention uh, two weeks ago down in Orlando. So it was fun to be there and be with all those folks. But um, awesome. I haven't mentioned that a, a lot. You were busy while I was gone. You got a new athletic director right? here. Right? You missed uh, some some uh, pretty big news last Wednesday. Trev Alberts uh, welcomed in as a new athletic director. I know you were chatting with him in the hallway today. He's gotten right to work, and um, I think he's going to do big things with this university athletics department. I think it's a fabulous hire. 
Uh, I think Trev, you know, this is a guy that was when he got done with his playing days in the NFL, he was he was at the very beginning of, of ESPN's game day. He was one of the big stars. He was he was sat in that Kirk Herb Street chair before Kirk did and and Trev did a marvelous job and he kind of felt like, okay, he's found his niche after his playing days. He's gonna be a broadcaster. And then he completely does the one eighty and becomes an athletic administrator at UNO, and I, and I know it's been beaten to death. You know the rough start that he had up there, making some really difficult decisions about where to take that program, and the elimination of football and wrestling. It still it still angers some people in Omaha. I get that. I know that. I understand that. But to me, it showed that Trev has the ability to make tough decisions, and, and I think when you're in that seat whether it's at UNO or UNL or wherever it may be, you're going to have to make tough decisions. And I think Trev showed that. And I've, I've gotten to know Trev a little bit down through the years. I don't know him great, but I know, I, I know him a little bit. And it was great to see him upstairs before I came down here to do the show tonight. But, um, I, again, I think he, he understands this place, which is important. He understands what it takes to be good at football. And I think he's going to work really well with Scott Frost. I, again, I just think it was a fabulous job. And I want to say one more thing. I, I think – some real credit needs to go to Chancellor Green and to President Carter for the way they handled this search. I mean, Jessica, it was really buttoned up. You didn't really hear a lot of what was going on. And then, boom, there was a press conference. I mean, I, yeah. I just think they did just a great job of leading that search. Nowadays, that stuff oh. leaks, you know. you, you uh, oh, It gets out way before. And so the fact that they were able to do it with such discretion and then it you know, they announced a press conference and everyone was kind of, you know, surprised by it, didn't know it was coming. I thought, yeah, that that speaks well of how well they handled it. I also like, too, the way that, you know, he mentioned, you talk about being a great leader and understanding this place, but he's also not trying to do it alone either. And, and he's a team guy, obviously, mm -hmm. was a great teammate when he was playing, but is a great teammate now. And even though he's the leader and the captain, so to speak, he's not trying to do this thing by himself either. Well, he understands it's a big it's a big machine. I mean, there's over 300 employees, over 600 athletes here in Nebraska. So it's a it's a big undertaking, and so he he did it at a smaller level. Yes, that there's not nearly that many sports and athletes at UNO, but he got his hands dirty. He got in there, did a lot of work, did a lot of the things, and so he understands. I think a lot of people's role in this thing, and I think that's important. But I I, I just go to the foundation of a guy, and the, and Trev's foundation is solid. He is, he's a, he's a guy with a good moral compass, and I think that's a great place to start. And I think he's really going to be good here. And, and I think, and and I've said this a few times that what we need here is some stability. I mean, we've rolled through these things. I mean, Bill was here less than four years. His predecessor was here about three years. Tom Osborne was the interim AD that transferred into the full time role for about five six years. You got to you got to kind of lock in and go. And I think with Trev, I think we can do that here. I really think there's some really good things on the horizon. And look at the bottom line of all of it is the student athletes, which, you know, Rick Allen came on the show last week and talked about that, how deeply he cares about the student athletes and their exp experience. And he's been a student athlete here yeah. first and foremost, but he's, you know, going to do what's best for them and continue to make this one of the best, the premier places for these student athletes to come get their education and to play their college careers, which as he mentioned several times, we don't have jobs without those student athletes. Exactly right. You know, he said it several times in his press conference about it's got to be about them. But he also, I think, embraces, Jessica, the new changes that are coming down Absolutely. the pipe. Absolutely, A lot yeah. of people don't want to. A lot of people are hesitant to say, well, let's roll with this NIL thing. Let's roll with expanding the college football playoff. A lot of people don't want to do that. I think he knows you better jump on board and embrace it because it didn't stop it. Yeah, I mean, you have to evolve, right? The people yep. that don't evolve and get left behind, and I think he's all about kind of staying on, on trend and what is best for moving forward because if you don't keep moving forward, you're going to get left behind. That's right. So, in fact, in our brief conversation up there, we were talking about just that topic about how much how the parts are moving right now in college sports. And we've been stuck in kind of a this is how we've always done it. We weren't going to change. Now it is, it's being forced to change. With you know some of the recent court rulings, the now the NIL that is here, uh, and I think he's ready for it, and I think that is a forward-thinking thing. And, and Chancellor Green said that was one of his boxes: Are you willing to adapt and roll with the new future of college sports? And I think Trev does that. I'm just really thrilled. Yeah, I mean, 
I just, I, I'm excited. I was super impressed when I got to, you know, interview him. And you can tell he's got TV experience as well, yes. you know, and which is important when you're standing in front of a microphone a lot of times and kind of being the mouthpiece of an athletics department, the, the way he can handle and deliver. And my mom said that. She said, wow, I was really impressed with how he answered yeah. questions. You know, that's, that's big. It's really big because you know when ESPN comes to do events here, they know Trev because he used to work for them. So they're going to want to interview him. Mm -hmm. And so if you can present yourself well, and he will, that's a plus. That's something he brings to the table that not a lot of people can do is handle themselves in front of a camera. Not that, not that Bill was bad. Bill was pretty good at that too. But Trev just has a real ease about him. Polished, super polished about Perfect it. Perfect word. Yep. Polished, really polished. So that happened while I was gone. I was delighted to see that, that, that Trev was the choice. Um, Man, I man, I woke up that morning. I had just gotten back from Florida the night before and was kind of groggy and started seeing the alerts on my phone. I'm like, wow, who's it going to be? I didn't know we were quite to that point, but just thrilled to have him. And he started today. How about that? His yeah. first day was today. So. And you moved into your office I, well, today. Well, I kind of did. <laughs> kind of did. It's a slow process, but kind of did that. All right, here's what we have on the program for tonight. We're going to jump into tonight to our position breakdown segments with Husker assistant coaches, uh, Travis Fisher, Husker defensive backs coach. This is a fascinating part of this team. I think this is a really talented part of this football team. And yet, I kind of want more out of that. We'll explain more, but we'll get his take about his guys, where this position is. I've said this before with, with Travis Fisher. When he got here a couple years ago, that room was messy. There was, there was not a lot of talent there. It was disjointed. He has done a fabulous job. So I'm glad we're starting with Travis Fisher. He'll be here in a couple of minutes to talk about the Husker defensive backfield. Coming up in hour number two, an old friend that I haven't talked to in a long time, Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star will be here. He was in Arlington last week for the Big 12 media days. Some topics that I want to get into him with. How did KU, how did the new coach at KU, Lance Leipold, stand up under the media scrutiny? We'll get to talk from Blair about that. SEC Media Days began today, and Jessica, the Big Ten's coming up Thursday and Friday. It's in talking season. It's everybody's better. The attitude's better. We're <laughs> One more, day at we're a more time. We're more team. Yeah, you know, everybody's got. So we're going to hear all those cliches <laughs> later in the week. But I'm really fascinated to hear. And we're going to talk later in the show about Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner. I'm anxious to hear from Kevin Warren. Kevin Warren mm -hmm. took the job January of 2020. Three months later, the pandemic hit. And he really hasn't had a big platform to talk and take questions. This will be his first chance in Indy on Thursday. I'm anxious to hear from him. But we're going to recap kind of what Greg Sankey had to say today at the SEC. He opened some eyes with some of his powerful language, and he certainly carries a big stick as it goes for college sports. So we'll get into all that here on the program tonight as well. You want to be a part of it here? The number is 402-413-2400. Call or fire off a text. Both numbers will work. Good to be back. Great to be back with Jessica tonight. And when we come back, we'll talk some Husker defensive backs with Coach Travis Fisher. That's next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Go where the summer leads you during the Season of Discovery sales event at Woodhouse Mazda. With a full lineup of CUVs, we are sure to have one for you. From the 2021 Mazda CX-30 to the family-friendly Mazda CX-9, our sales staff is here to help find the perfect model for you. With a suite of features, you can expect more with Mazda at a price that is good for you. Test drive one today at one of our two convenient Woodhouse Mazda locations in Bellevue or Omaha. Or shop online today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Does it really matter where beef comes from? Meet the facts. Fact. High V Choice Reserve beef comes from the Midwest, so you get only the highest quality beef raised on family farms here in the heartland. Where do the other guys get their beef? We're not sure either. Get the facts at meetthefacts.hyvee.com. 
There is no better way to support your Huskers than becoming a season ticket holder. And a limited number of Nebraska football season tickets are on sale now. Secure your seat in Memorial Stadium for head coach Scott Frost's fourth season at the helm as the Huskers play host to Buffalo, Michigan, Ohio State, Iowa, and more. Now is your chance to become part of the storied tradition that is Husker football. To purchase season tickets, call 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Back to Adventures in Technology. Oh, no! Our IT hero is dangling from a mountain of open IT tickets, ready to plunge into the abyss of overtime. But wait! It's Marco's Managed IT to the rescue with a lifeline of 24-7 network and user support. Our IT hero is saved! A quick selfie with Marco's Managed IT team, and our hero is back to work. For more successful Managed IT adventures, go to marconet.com. As the official bank of Husker Nation, FNBO invites you to take the game with you with the free Husker Visa debit card. Tied to your checking account, the Husker Visa debit card allows fans to show their Husker pride all year long. Get your free Husker Visa debit card today at any FNBO branch or visit fnbo.com slash Huskers. FNBO, the official bank of Husker Nation. Member FDIC. Because Ford trucks and SUVs are built to help you every day, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. And now you can get great offers on the entire Ford lineup. Come see how at your local Ford store. Based on 2019 calendar year total sales, there's a Ford built for everyone. Whether it's the latest driver assist technologies, room to fit the whole family, or the power you need on the job site, Ford has you covered. Head to your Midwest Ford dealers today to find great deals on the right vehicle for you. Because Ford trucks and SUVs are built to help you every day, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. And now you can get great offers on the entire Ford lineup. Come see how at your local Ford store. Based on 2019 calendar year total sales, there's a Ford built for everyone. Whether it's the latest driver assist technologies, room to fit the whole family, or the power you need on the job site, Ford has you covered. Head to your Midwest Ford dealers today to find great deals on the right vehicle for you. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night, New Week of Sports Nightly. And tonight, launching a look at this Husker football team with our first position breakdown. And defensive backs coach Travis Fisher joining us here on the program. And, Coach, you got a, a nice boost in the offseason with Cam Tater Britt announcing he didn't want to come back and not, give it, not throw his name in the hat for the NFL draft. And also the two safeties with Williams and Dismuke opting to take advantage of the new rule. you got to be pretty happy with all that experience coming back. Yeah, I was very excited. You know, I kind of expected it, you know. Um, not just expected them to do, you know, to come back, but expected those guys to um, want to come back and help themselves um, out as far as what they want to be, um, uh, the football players they want to be, and being able to play in the National Football League. So I thought that all of them when I, when I told them what I felt um, would be good for them as far as trying to become a National Football League player. And, and then I, and I thought as soon as I told them, hey, you need to do this or do that, then they would do it. So they did it, you know, so, you know, I was happy they listened to me. And, um, you know, they've been, been, been back and they've been great. Cam Tater Britt made a lot of progress last year, Coach. He, he took himself to kind of an all-conference type of corner. Is there more left in his game? Yeah, there's a whole lot left in Cam's game. I mean, he's working extremely hard down in the weight room, um, very focused when he's in the building. Um, I just think that there's a whole lot more left in his game as far as, you know, he's trying to get his technique better, understanding of the game a lot better. Um, you know, he's very physical, so... Um, you know that kind of that, that kind of stuff is just only a matter of time where you know <laughs> you know when, when you're that physical when your cam plays that way um, people don't want to come your way you know he's very physical um, he can easily come down and make himself look like a safety in the run game and he can he can fly around like a DB so um, it's just more left in the tank for him. You know, it's a whole lot left in the tank for him. The learning part of the game, um, um, that's what we're striving right now to get better on. 
Speaking of physical, your two safeties that decided to come back, Deontay Williams and Markel Dismuk, very physical players. Where do you want to see them continue to grow? Um, those guys are, you know, Deontay, just speaking of Deontay right now, Deontay is, um, you know, is he's a man child. And he's, he's a flat out man child. Everything about Deontay um, is pro. Everything about him, um, from the way he carries himself around the building, the way he watch film, uh, he's in here, he has a kid, and he's in here at night. Um, the nights that he can, he tries to be here all every night, you know, and, um, you know, it's not a party around town. <clears throat> Captain on the team, he um, he runs the DB room, you know, and, um, you know, like I have guys like Cam Taylor that's really good football players, and when they speak up, it, 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 it speaks volume when they speak up in the room, but Deontay runs the room. All right, so um, just just speaking of him, he's a pro. You know, he's a pro. Just coming back here, um, only help him out because he was banged up, and then, you know, got a couple target penalties because of the way he strike people. So, um, you know, just want to get him back in here and have a full season of showing people why he's – why he's Deontay Williams, you know, why he why, why he deserves to be in the National Football League is really, um, <clears throat> it's really, you know, why why he want to come, why I want him to come back. Besides that, he's already graduated, you know, he graduated what a year and a half ago, and um, you know, he's working on getting his master's. So, let's talk about some corners. Quentin Newsom kind of grabbed a hold of that other spot opposite Cam Taylor Britt during the spring. I want you to talk a little bit about him and then Braxton Clark coming off of an injury. I know you have big big plans for Braxton too. Yep. Quentin is doing a great job. I mean, Quentin starting the camp, and I would say he would probably be – he was probably about a C. If I had to rate him, maybe a C. He was probably about a C. And, um, man, did he, did, did he uh, you know, um, pick up the pace fast. You know, he was – to the point where, you know, um, starting to become a, a young DiCaprio Boodle as far as how much he's picking up and how fast he's picking up as being a sponge and just learning the techniques and learning the things that I'm trying to teach him about the game. Um, you know, somewhere in the middle of the camp, probably middle towards the end, it's probably like a, probably like a B, you know. So, um, you know, he finished off in that B range, you know, to be honest with you. So... I feel very confident with Q being able to go out in the football game, um, uh, going out of the football game and do what I'm asking him to do. It's just uh, some things that Q needs to get better. You know, he's working extremely hard in the weight room. Um, he's getting stronger. He's very strong, a bit thin guy. Um, and then there's a lot of things I just want to get him, you know, because, you know, practice is one thing and you want to make practice simulate a game as much as you can. And, and that's the way. Um, that's the way um, I coach these guys in the room. So um, so that's what makes me feel that way about Q, being able to go out in the football game. But it's sometimes in a football game where it doesn't work out way, you know, and that's the part where, you know, it's going to get Q over the hump, being able to respond when things don't work its way. And that's the, um, you, know, you know, the maturity level that I'm trying to get him to, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's pretty much Quentin Newsom. Um, where he's at right now. So, um, and then having some guys in here to help him get to that point faster, you know, either by um, superseding them and beating them out of position or making them pick it up even more every day. And that's called competition. And, and, and that's, that's exactly, you know, how I dreamed about this room being um, from the very first day I got here, being able to compete and always competing and it's a daily competition. It's not like, hey, Quentin Newsom, you're a starter here. That, you only start you only start the day that you're starting. You're only starting the play that you're playing. Um, so um, Braxton Clark, you know, being able to push Quentin Newsom, um, it's, what, um, it's what I really want. Um, it didn't work out in the spring because Braxton was banged up with a shoulder and then some other things, but other things that Braxton hurt himself with. Um, but just being able to have Braxton available now coming to the camp, and he has, he also is now working extremely hard. You know, he's working out extra. Um, Deontay 
works out about two or three times a day. So Braxton is lagging on to Deontay now. So now, now I feel like I feel like going into camp, Braxton to be the old Braxton, you know, the Braxton I, I need him to be. And so we have some nice competitions going on in that room. Um, as far as some other guys, um, we'll have some things going on in that room. So it'll be very exciting um, on both sides. It'll be very exciting on both sides. Um, a high shake up. Line him, Nadab Joseph, two other guys that are probably going to be in that mix, aren't they? Yep, I would say Tamon Lynham was the third corner as far as um, if he was if he did if he wasn't hurt, if he didn't hurt, and you know he had a, a nagging uh, growing injury um, that he had in high school, and then he's just play, been playing with it, playing with him, playing with it, and it was just gets, gets getting worse and worse. So he got it fixed, and he was only going to be out for about six to eight weeks. So um, he's probably right at the end right now. So. Uh, he's doing very good, you know. His rehab is going perfect. Very mature to be so young. Um, don't get in trouble. Yes sir, no sir. Um, has the size, can run. Um, he's also a sponge, so he's in the room too. He's in here, and that's, he was all in here yesterday. And um, so just having those guys. I mean, I got guys. I got Nadab Joseph. I got I, and Nadab Joseph is a freak. He's all around freak. Um, he's a freak in the weight room. <clears throat> he he's all around freak. All right, he has the size, he has the speed. Um, he's strong. His body looks like it looks like you drew it up. Um, the muscles popping out everywhere. Um, you know, struggle with him learning the playbook at first, um, but now he's starting to pick it up. Um, and then he also struggled with injuries. You know, he had a nagging hamstring that bothered him the whole spring ball that he tried his best to practice with. But, you know, he would just get frustrated and frustrated, you know, with that deal. And um, I understand that. But um, just being able to have him healthy um, going into camp is very important. So um, right now he's probably down in the weight room right now, you know. So um, and then Dab Joseph also. So. Visiting Husker defensive backs coach Travis Fisher here as we break down the defensive backfield room. Let's let's talk about some more guys that have been in the program for a while. Isaac Gifford and Noah Pola Gates, two guys that I certainly can contribute on defense, but maybe also help this team out on special teams. Noah Pola Gates has picked it up, a, picked up the pace a whole lot at the safety position. He really did. I mean, he had a great spring. Um, he's not that guy that I can say, "Hey, we're trying to stro-, you know trying to get Noah to learn the playbook now." Now he knows it. Um, uh, he's not that guy that's not vocal anymore. Now he's vocal. Um, he's flying around. And now you can see what you recruited. You know, now you can see it. Um, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time for Noah to take this thing over. It's only a matter of time. I, I appreciate him working hard. He works extremely hard down in the weight room. He's matured so much since he's been here. Um, and then, you know, those, those are the guys where you kind of like, okay, I got to get him over the hump. You know, sometimes they get away from home and, and and they get a little homesick and they gotta get them over the hump. He's crossed the hump. And now you can see, um, now you can see what you recruited. Now you can see a a, 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 a flower just blossom. And not, now you can see Noah Polar Gates, you know, uh, being more vocal. You can see him enjoying being in Lincoln. You can see all of that now. So I really appreciate him just being in the room. Um, and right now, you know, just him and Miles Farmer being in that group um, behind, uh, you know, right beside pretty much, um, right beside pretty much Deontay and, um, and Markel. You know, that's where I see him at. You mentioned Miles Farmer. He was really making plays for you last year until that freak pregame accident at Purdue. Is he back? Can he help the Huskers here this fall? Uh, Miles Farmer is a starter here. Uh, that's how I see him. Deontay, Markel, and, De- and Miles Farmer is a starter here. Um, um, Miles is working so hard. I mean, he, you know, the first, he didn't miss a day of camp. He didn't miss a, a one day of spring ball with an ankle. And, and um, at the beginning, he was limping a lot. And then after about a week, he wasn't. So after about a week and a half, he wasn't. And then, he begged me the entire spring 
to let him go live every time we went live. Every hit and drill he wanted to be in. Bet me. Kind of, I'm like, no, Miles, get back. No, Miles. And that's the kind of player you want. All right, so he's back. And he's not limping. And, you know, he's healthy. He's His body has changed up, you know. He's already big. He's, <laughs> he's been bigger. Um, but staying lean with it. But he's, you know, the muscles are popping out. It's working extremely hard in the weight room. Um, you know, uh, uh, the difference between those first two guys and those second two guys is, you know, honestly, just a mistake here and there. You know, just a mistake here and there, you know. Um, and and I think this year, you know, in, fall, in camp, those mistakes, mistakes have disappeared. You know, so um, kind of healthy. In, at that position right now, next year it'd be a little different with those, you know, first two leaving. But that's why I feel so good about Noah, and um, that's why I feel so good about Noah and um, and Miles um, being in the position they are now um, for the future. Again, busy with Husker defensive bass coach Travis Fisher. Let's talk about your newbies, the the three incoming players, Marcus Buford, who was here in the spring, Malik Williams, Kobe Bretts, who have, have arrived in the summer months. I know you liked them a lot to give them scholarships and get them here, but I'm sure you're excited to get on a get more on the practice field with those three. Yep, Marquise Buford is is a very mature kid. Um, hangs a lot out with Cam. Um, he's played a lot of football. He's been around a lot of people, so. Um, He's not afraid to step up there, you know. Unfortunately, he got he got hurt on the very first his very first play here here in here in Lincoln. So um, that's very unfortunate, and it didn't even look like he got hurt. I mean, it was like <laughs> he didn't even fall. It was like you know, um, well, your shoe came off. No, ACL, you know. <laughs> so it's you know, so uh, but hey. If you seen him today, you don't you don't even think he had an injury. So I mean, he's moving around, he's squatting down there in the weight room. He's doing, he's I don't I don't even know if I if I have to worry about not having him for for a, a part of the season because I what it looks like right now I'm probably gonna have him for a certain part of the season. Uh, so, um, but he's doing really good. He has a lot of position flexibility. Can also play in that nickel position he can play on the outside he can play on the inside you know he's uh physical he's thick uh so he's doing a great job and he's smart too he's very smart so pretty much you know he pretty much picked up on the playbook a little faster than most guys i've had here so far so he's sharp about the other two incoming freshmen uh kobe bretts came in looking good he came in looking good you know he passed his test coming in um, you know, um, so great size. Um, so he's looking real good right now. Those guys are in those introductory deals right now. Just got finished with um, 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 orientation and just got done with, you know, some some uh, pre-testing and things like that. And they're in class and taking their first classes here. Um, haven't really had a chance to be around um, those guys in a in a in a film room yet, uh, because of the timing. Um, but um, I'm just trying to spend a lot of time with them throughout the day, uh, maybe on the weekends, uh, stuff like that, uh, as well as Malik Williams. You know, um, Malik Williams is uh, came in looking like a track star. You know, he's thin, and then he ran track in high school and did really good at it. So. He came in looking very good. His body is lean, my muscles, long arms. Um, so he came in the same way, uh, looking very good. So um, had a chance to spend a little time with him uh, this weekend, you know, to get him, you know, get him out of those dorms and you know help continue to build a bond with him and stuff like that. So I think that's important when those guys come. Even though Kobe is from Omaha, still want to build that great bond, that coach-player bond with him and invite them over to the house and maybe go jump in a pool together. It's hot outside, you know, things like that. So um, just trying the best, uh, trying my best with this crazy schedule we have with official visits and camps going on to be able to wrap my arms around uh, the newbies um, um, and get them used to being in Lincoln. 
You've also been able to dip into the transfer portal and get Tyreek Johnson, who came, who comes to Lincoln from Ohio State. What did you like about his tape, and what did you like about wanting to put him into your room? Tyreek is a kid, obviously, that we knew down in Florida. Um, um, obviously, you know, where we were at in Florida, he wasn't coming there. You know, he, obviously, he went to Ohio State. Um, but he has a bunch of position flexibility, you know. Uh, a lot of people may think he's a safety. I think he's a corner. Um, but, you know, just by having him, those opinions about him right there, I think I think that's good for us um, um, because I cross-train these guys anyway. All right, so I don't have to have a stubborn guy that say, hey, I don't want to take that rep at I don't want to take that rep at safety, you know. I had DiCaprio Boodle at safety. I've had I've had um, Cam Taylor at safety. He plays safety and nickel. DiCaprio's played safety and nickel. Um, and um, I see Tyreek the same way. Um, so um, he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna heat it up in the room extremely a whole lot. It's gonna be a whole lot. It's gonna be heated up a whole lot. And that's where I want it to be. That's perfect. This is exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, from the Cam Taylor side to the to the to the Quentin Newsom side right now, and that's the, exactly where I wanted to be, and um, um, because that's the, how you get the best out of these guys. That's you know just having a complacent room is not where I want to be. I, I want to have a room that guys have to wake up in the morning and have to put on the work hat, you know, um, and, and that that works for Tyreek too, you know. So um, he knows that you know it's part of the deal when I was recruiting him. <clears throat> when he got in the portal, that he knew that, hey, um, if this is the place you want to be, um, this is what, this is how I'm going to coach you, and, um, and and this is how I'm going to coach you. It may be different to being on Ohio State. This is how I'm going to coach you, and it's going to be a less work attitude every time, every day. Well, Coach, we appreciate the rundown. Have a great camp. Keep these guys healthy. I know the competition is going to be fierce. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Husker defensive backs coach Travis Fisher with us here on Sports Island. It's a room full of talent, and yet you kind of want more out of that group. Jessica and I will talk about that. Again, if you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. That's our Sports Island hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family, bringing you more choices in brands, locations, and service. Experience the difference. Purchase with confidence. This is Woodhouse. More of the show coming up. So, when do you think you'll be done with our kitchen renovation? Uh, well, ma'am, the Italian marble countertops will take a while to get in. No problem. In the meantime, you can start on the spiral staircase. Um, uh, what? If you win Mega Millions from the Nebraska Lottery with a jackpot that starts in the millions in drawings Tuesdays and Fridays, you can afford to go a little mega. Um, so you want us to build a spiral staircase? Well, how else are we supposed to get up to the helipad? Oh, good. My husband's home. Top prize odds, one in 302 million. Husker fans, looking for a seat in Memorial Stadium? Custom three-game mini plans are available now for only $195. Choose any combination of the six games available. Matchups available in the three-game plan include the home opener versus Fordham, Buffalo, Northwestern, Michigan, Purdue, and Iowa. Don't miss this opportunity to join the greatest fans in college sports and help fill Memorial Stadium. To build your mini plan, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Get us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. As the official bank of Husker Nation, FNBO invites you to take the game with you with the free Husker Visa debit card. Tied to your checking account, the Husker Visa debit card allows fans to show their Husker pride all year long. Get your free Husker Visa debit card today at any FNBO branch or visit fnbo.com slash Huskers. FNBO, the official bank of Husker Nation. Member FDIC. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Stadium seats may have been replaced with recliners. Tailgates outside the stadium may have been swapped for the ones in the backyard, and thousands of screaming fans have been replaced by one screaming baby. The only thing that hasn't changed is us watching the game together. 
It's game time, baby. Show off your Husker team spirit during your next virtual watch party. Visit Cox.com slash Huskers to take a selfie with Herbie. And don't forget to share. Watch together, cheer together, take a selfie together, even if you're not actually together. Cox, bringing us closer. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. With a combination of strong academics and affordability, UNL offers an excellent educational value. This year, the university was named one of the Princeton Review's Best Value Colleges. And the new Nebraska Promise and Career Scholarship programs are connecting more hardworking Huskers with financial help so they can pursue their dreams. Still waiting for your stimulus check? Don't wait for the government. Get the SOS stimulus package right now. For a limited time, get $2,000 off a qualifying York system. York products are all proudly made in the USA. Call SOS, a trustworthy company since 1950. SOS is a family-owned third-generation company. Get you and the loved ones comfortable again with SOS. SOS to the rescue. So when do you think you'll be done with our kitchen renovation? Uh, well, ma'am, the Italian marble countertops will take a while to get in. No problem. In the meantime, you can start on the spiral staircase. Um, uh, what? If you win Mega Millions from the Nebraska Lottery with a jackpot that starts in the millions in drawings Tuesdays and Fridays, you can afford to go a little mega. Um, so you want us to build a spiral staircase? Well, how else are we supposed to get up to the helipad? Oh, good. My husband's home. Top prize odds, one in 302 million. 402-413-2400. That's the number to dot us up with a comment or question. We welcome you back to Sports Sonic. Greg Sharp along with Jessica Cootie here on a Monday night. 40 days ahead of kickoff for the Big Red. Great to hear from Oscar defensive backs coach Travis Fisher. Really like his guys, and it was big to get two seniors to come back to play another year. And Cam Tater Britt last year became one of the better DBs in the conference. And yet, statistically, Jessica, you look at this, and there's there's things missing. There are holes there. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Big Ten stats from last year, Nebraska five interceptions in eight games, which is ninth in the Big Ten compared to Indiana, who was second in the nation with 17. Now, four of those were by Miles Farmer and Cam Taylor Britt. So you do have that coming back. But it seems to be a reoccurring theme by a lot of these assistant coaches that the depth is there and the competition. And that's what makes teams better is that competition that you got more bodies in there that can compete and push. And you're not complacent. You don't think, oh, this job is mine. Even Cam Taylor Britt, you heard um, to him talking about that, that he doesn't, his job isn't secure when they start fall camp on day one. Yeah. Th- that group, I think, has the potential to really take a leap forward. That whole defense, and I know we're excited about the defense because all the guys that are back. But they got to force turnovers. That's a part of it. And Nebraska's been been upside down the last couple of years in turnover margin. And when you're not forcing turnovers and you are turning the ball over, it's a tough combination to overcome. Yeah, and I think a lot of that too is comes with the pressure you get up front, right? True. So yeah. and and I know the the defensive line as well as we've talked quite a bit here, Tony Tuyo. Tuioti talked about the depth there that, you know, being able to run guys in and out like a line change for hockey and being able to get the pressure on opposing quarterbacks to make them make those kinds of mistakes. And, you, you know, you hear that often from, you know, the guys that are hauling in the interceptions. Who's the first people that they give credit to? The defensive line that kind of causes that disruption. So, you know, I think all around just the the depth and the talent that they've been able to build at all three levels of the defense is, is what's going to prove to be crucial in, in causing those turnovers. Yeah, it just – Nebraska's offense had to go long field so much of the time last year. You get those turnovers, that's what sets you up. Short fields, that's what gets more points on the board. It all kind of goes hand in hand. So like the secondary, they can be better, I think, than what we've seen. They have to go do it. You're right, though. It's going to be a competitive fall. There's a bunch of bodies back there. And with getting Johnson in from Ohio State, he adds one more name into there that can fight for. By the uh, way, do you care much about uh, preseason watch lists? No Nebraska defensive players on the Bednarik watch list, which I was surprised about. The only one that probably would have had a chance would have been Cam Taylor. Yeah. Probably the only one. Adrian came out today on the Maxwell. But, yeah, I mean, when you're three and five a year ago and not over 500 two years ago, you're not going to be on a lot of people's radars. you got to win to get those – those accolades. It's not about where you start. You, it's where you um, finish. You were hanging out in a cave? What? what tell me what this was all about. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, internal media shoot they had, you know, for the poster shoot and the 
tunnel walk video and all kinds of fun things. They had a bunch of different stations going on that um, they did it. And I guess it's out now. It was a secret for two days at uh, Robber's Cave. Did, cool have you, place. I've been there. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was awesome. Uh, lots of cool history that learned about. I guess it's kind of transferred and uh, kind of changed over into being a few different things over the years. But there's a documentary coming out on it, apparently. Nice. And, um, yeah, it was awesome. It was a really cool spot. And so they had, um, you know, guys coming through there in different groups and, and got a chance to talk to a few guys. Um, but then Wednesday, of course, we kind of had some big news happen here. So I was supposed to go out both days and a lot of the defensive players were coming on Wednesday and, you know, was uh, he had a little bit of an athletic director announcement here that had to be here for. But um, what did the players think of it? They thought it was awesome. They didn't know that the cave existed, which I think a lot of people probably didn't. Um, but uh, they had a blast. And I'm telling you, the digital team here, both the, um, you know, with the football guys and, and the digital team with, with Nick and Alex and them are phenomenal. They're incredible. They're some of the best in the country. And uh, the, the some of the shots and the photos that they were getting were awesome. And the guys were loving it. And, had to. You know, and just the camaraderie. And, you know, I mean, obviously my first time around this team specifically, but I've been around football teams and the way that they like each other and the chemistry that, you know, they, they had, even doing something like that. I think bodes well for a football team. And you can tell they genuinely like each other, like being around each other too. Well, how fun. I saw the video drop and I thought, you know, it's because a lot of times those team photos or their individual pictures are taken in front of a green screen or a black backdrop or something. And you're like, yeah, it's kind of boring. That, yeah. was, that was really cool and unique. What a neat thing to do. Yeah. And I, I'm excited to see kind of all the different, because it, it is for a lot of different things, but how it all kinds of, kind of turns out but it was awesome it was like such a cool backdrop and there are so many different pockets within the cave that kind of provided different backgrounds that you could be shooting in four different places but they don't look the same yeah. they had some cool lighting going on so yeah there is a lot of different elements that they were kind of building for but yeah it so innovative and you know i, I mean I, that all plays into recruiting as well Absolutely. you know you're trying to sell yourself and and how you're promoting yourself on your social media. I mean, look what's, what's being done for you here. So. When you when you think of Nebraska, you don't think of caves. No. You just don't. I mean, I asked that question to a lot of the players. I'm like, did, you know, when they told you you're going to be doing a photo shoot in a cave, like a lot of them was, Nebraska has a cave, <laughs> you know? I mean, people didn't know that caves, that cave existed here, but... Um, yeah, apparently there were, there were some parties that went on back yep. in the day with the oh, football sure. team that they uh, had their... Uh, after the spring game in the 70s, they would go down there and have a big party. Yeah. And so uh, they were the players were learning a lot about the history as well. There was a restaurant slash bar that was open out there a couple years ago. It, it closed. It didn't make it too bad because it was a cool place to go go have an adult beverage. It was a fun place. All right, 402-413-2400. That's the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. We're back to wrap up hour one next. Shop Woodhouse Chevy Buick in Missouri Valley, Iowa, and experience the Woodhouse difference, where our sales staff is here, ready to help you find your perfect new car, truck, or SUV. And with over 100 new vehicles on our lot with more arriving daily, we're sure to have something for you. From the Buick Encore to our heavy-duty trucks, we have the best selection available. Find new roads and shop all of our inventory and offers at WoodhouseChevy.com or visit us at our dealership for a test drive today. Making car buying easier. This is Woodhouse. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Does it really matter where beef comes from? Meet the facts. Fact. High V Choice Reserve beef comes from the Midwest. So you get only the highest quality beef raised on family farms here in the heartland. Where do the other guys get their beef? We're not sure either. Get the facts at meetthefacts.hyvee.com. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office, 402-413-2400.
The number if you want to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. I have not seen you since the 4th of July. Did you survive your first 4th of July in Lincoln, Nebraska? <laughs> I did. Man, what a fireworks show that happened for, what, five days straight? Um, that was it's, wild. And it was crazy, all day. I, I At 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, I, I started hearing them. Uh, popping them off and I was like all right it's gonna be a party here in Lincoln these next few days yeah I think most people when they come to Nebraska for the first time if they because it it's Katie bar the door it shoot them off and go which you told me but I was like yeah it can't be that bad but I tweeted them I put it out on my social media I was like okay I have never heard anything like this and I haven't in my entire life I have never heard fireworks like I did here <laughs> for four days straight you know what I mean like uh Friday night all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then even into Monday. You'll, you know, hopefully, because after a good Husker win, they'll blow them off too. So hopefully we, we give them a lot of those this fall. Hey, Some I'm here for it. That'd be good for that. Yeah, it was fun. My dog is not a big fan of fireworks, so this year we kind of medicated him. <laughs> Gave him some anxiety pills. I, I needed, I should have gotten some of that for my dog when we moved him here and, uh, I but was, you said it, it wasn't bad. No, he's good. Uh, he's, uh, kind of thrives on being by himself. So, um, he's... Loving it. We're going on multiple walks a day. He's adjusting. So, but yeah. Good. But he, yes, he handled the fireworks fine. Yeah, because the dogs are not a big fan of those. No. Because they're loud. I, I can imagine, like, how how a lot of dogs probably freaked out a little bit. Yeah. Whew. It's, you know, it, I, I, I don't blame them. It, I don't like, to, I mean, I like to just sit back and watch other people blow their blow their stuff off. I'm like, all right, I'll watch you do your show over here. And my neighbor over here, you go have, have fun. Go get it. It'll be It'll be good. But that's all behind us now. Media Day week. The SEC started today. The Big 12 was last week. We're going to talk about the Big 12 Media Days with Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star next hour. The Big 10 later in the week. I, I'm really anxious for that. Always am. One, you want to hear from the head coach. That's always something you want to hear from. But I'm, I'm anxious to hear from the commissioner. He's not really been on a big stage since he took this over a year and a half ago. Yeah, and, and reading a lot of the news today, it said that a lot of the commissioners were going to kind of do opening statements, kind of addressing mm -hmm. some of the um, issues with the NCAA. So it will also be interesting to see if that's kind of in his opening remarks. Because, be. yeah, I mean, it seems that most of them have kind of had the, the thing, hey, we're going to go into this, which is why Mark Emmert came out with some of the comments that he did last week maybe trying to get out in front of it so it'll be interesting to see what his take is on all of this as well we're going to talk more about what greg sankey said at the sec next hour in the program he was pretty bold in some of his statements and obviously yeah. as the commissioner of the sec you carry a pretty big stick in any kind of conversations about collegiate sports as well as that league tends to do so looking forward to jumping into all that and hey Again, would love to hear from Scott Frost. The three Husker players that are going to be going to Indianapolis are Ben Stilley, Austin Allen, and then uh, Deontay Williams going to make that trip back. I know a lot of people, Jessica, were like, why isn't Adrian going? Well, the Husker team is really kind of on a break right now. A lot of the young men have headed back home for a few days before camp opens next week, fan day on Thursday, first practice on Friday. So Adrian had already planned to be out of town. I don't blame him. You're already out of town. I mean. Yeah, I mean, and, and a huge opportunity for these other guys to get a chance to be on that stage that, you know, might not Absolutely. always get to. And, I mean, it is a, a great experience for them to get to go be in front of all of that media. And um, it's a long day. It's a grind to go through that. But it's a great opportunity for them to kind of be on that platform. So, uh, it will be great for a couple other guys to kind of be able to be in the spotlight. Absolutely. We'll look forward to having that and then get put it on your calendars. Fan day on the 29th, 530 to 730 here at Memorial Stadium. A chance for you to come out and meet the Huskers on that night. Great first hour. Good to hear from Travis Fisher. Our first position breakdown with the defensive backs. Wednesday, we're going to hear from Mario Verduzco. Talk quarterbacks with him. Next hour, Blair Kirkhoff. We're going to talk about the Olympic Games. I'm nervous about these Olympics, folks. We'll talk about that coming up next. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop Woodhouse Ford first. With three convenient locations, we offer a wide selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs. Our no-pressure sales team is eager to help you find the perfect vehicle. We make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in person or online at woodhouseford.com. Choose your experience and start your car buying journey today. 
at Woodhouse Ford in Blair, Omaha, or Plattsmouth. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. So, when do you think you'll be done with our kitchen renovation? Uh, well, ma'am, the Italian marble countertops will take a while to get in. No problem. In the meantime, you can start on the spiral staircase. Um, uh, what? If you win Mega Millions from the Nebraska Lottery with a jackpot that starts in the millions in drawings Tuesdays and Fridays, you can afford to go a little mega. Um, so you want us to build a spiral staircase? Well, how else are we supposed to get up to the helipad? Oh, good. My husband's home. Top prize odds, one in 302 million. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus. Insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more.
Good evening. I'm Greg Trapp, and here's tonight's sports ticker. Husker baseball coach Will Bolt made it official today with the announcement of former Texas A&M head coach and former Husker assistant coach Rob Childress as the new director of player development for the Big Red. Childress was an assistant in Nebraska from 1998 to 2005 before taking over at the helm at A&M, where he guided the Aggies for 16 seasons and made two appearances in the College World Series. Multiple reports are out that former Husker Spencer Schwellenbach has signed with the Atlanta Braves. Schwellenbach was drafted last week in the second round. Reports have it that the pitcher shortstop inked for $1 million. Nebraska quarterback Adrian Martinez's name is on the watch list for the Maxwell Award. That honor is given out each year to the College Football Player of the Year. Martinez enters the season with 13 school records. Nebraska Athletics will have seven athletes representing four different countries at the upcoming Olympic Games in Tokyo. Four former Husker volleyball players will be competing. Sarah Pavin will be in the beach volleyball competition. Jordan Larson, Kelsey Robinson, and Justine wong Aranches will play on the U.S. women's volleyball squad. Beatrice Padron, an incoming freshman, will swim for Costa Rica. Keishi Tominaga, a new addition for Fred Hoiberg's Huskers, will be competing for the Japanese in the three-on-three basketball competition. And Amber Parkinson Nebin, former track athlete, will take part in road cycling. Checking out the Major League Baseball scoreboard. Doubleheader going on in Chicago. The Twins win game one, 3-2 over the White Sox in eight innings. Games underway, top of the third. Nationals all over the Marlins, 10 to nothing. The Red Sox 11 to nothing over the Blue Jays. They're in the second inning. The Reds lead the Mets 7 to 3 in the second. Baltimore 2, Tampa Bay nothing. They're in the third. Detroit 2, Texas nothing. They're in the middle of the fourth inning, about ready to get underway. Cleveland at Houston. The Cubs and Cardinals open a series in St. Louis. And game two of the Twins White Sox series about to get underway as well. Braves and Padres in Atlanta postpone with wet weather. Later tonight, Oakland hosting. The Angels, the Pirates out in Arizona to take on the Diamondbacks and the Giants visiting the Dodgers. Those are tonight's headlines. I'm Greg Sharp. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Little chopper right back to Schwellenbach. Throws to first. In time. Huskers make it nine in a row as they take game one. A terrific pitching performance on both sides for Nebraska. Povich, Buns, Schwellenbach combine on the shutout. Povich gets the win. Schwellenbach is eighth save, and Nebraska takes game one of this series, a final of one to nothing. Povich was as good as I've ever seen him today. The fastball had life to it. The changeup had a lot of late life to it as well. Looking the same out of the hand. He threw the curveball, the slider, and the cutter. I mean, he had he threw five different pitches today, all for strikes. Very competitive. Looked like an ace, and we needed every bit of it today. Sports Nightly is brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Transportation Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to Hour 2 of our Monday show, 40 days ahead of kickoff. The countdown is on for Husker football. The Huskers will open the season week zero in Champaign against the Fighting Illini. Glad you're with us here for another week of sports nightly coming up here in a few minutes an old friend of the program we have not talked to in a while blair kirkhoff for the kansas city star will be here he was in arlington texas last week attending big 12 media days the big 10 media days are later this week in indianapolis and we'll get some highlights of what took place for the huskers old conference so we'll do that on our text line got a text jessica i heard a lot of optimism when the coaches toured the state a few weeks ago now with a new ad sure hope this is the beginning of a program stability. I think so, don't you? Yeah, I mean, and said it, you know, earlier, but when you start getting that depth and that competition at all of these position groups and and at all of them, not just a couple, but that's when you start kind of seeing a change and a turn. And, you know, it it takes some time to implement your, your system and your program. And it sounds like, you know, I've talked to a few of them, but, you know, that there is depth and competition that they're expecting at every single position when they start fall camp and and you know that's what makes teams better and you know the fact that coaches are saying hey there's you know you assume that there are starters and guys that have come back that hey you know they've earned their their spot but when you're saying no everybody's got to go earn it that's that's the makings of a, a team that could maybe do some big things Trev Alberts first day on the job was today bumped into him right before we came down to do the show tonight 
Uh, didn't waste any time. Got right after it, didn't he? Yeah, and by the way, when you said 40 days, like when you start getting into the 30s, 39 days tomorrow, like that's that's right around the corner. How about that. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm so excited about Trev and uh, what he's going to do. And I, I mean, I was so impressed with them and just a nice person. When you see him in the hallway, you know, and you, um, you know, or because our, our offices are right mm -hmm. by the uh, the administration offices and, and when you know, he speaks to you and knows your name and is is welcoming to people that are within your staff. I think that is is a you know model for success. They, they, you know, they do tend to keep the troubled students near the principal's <laughs> office. Is that, so is that is, right? Yeah, I think there's a message. That's, oh, that's why, why we got put right there. Why we've been put right there. We have to be keep, monitored. <laughs> better keep our eye uh, on those people. So media day later this week. Also later this week, opening ceremonies for the Tokyo Olympics. Obviously, they are a year later because of COVID last year. They were supposed to be last July, August, but they got pushed back a year. This is uh, this thing makes me nervous. I know. I woke up today and I saw the story about the U.S. gymnast who had tested positive. She was not one of the main, but she was like a reserve. Uh, alternate, yeah. An alternate. They sent her home. But she's been training with the team. Right. So isn't there a contact? I don't, what do you think? Are you, how, are you nervous about this thing? So there's been 12 that have come out positive since yesterday. 12 mm -hmm. athletes of, you know, all over. And if they've already been in the Olympic Village, if they've been interacting with teammates, which, you know, you hope that they've been taking protocols with, with gymnastics and the way that they train. I think it's not like they are all just like, you know, on one apparatus at once. They kind of are in different, you know, spots all throughout the gym and, and everything. So you hope maybe they're not all just, you know, uh, congregated in one area the entire time while they're training. But no, I mean, it's worrisome because you don't ever know if five days from now, you might test negative today and then five days from now who have been interacting with her, maybe you test positive. I don't know. I mean, how, how detrimental would that be? How awful if Simone Biles, you know, I don't even want to put that out into the universe, but you never know with such a small team and they've been traveling. Have they been together the whole time? I mean, it's definitely worrisome. That had to be your first thought. Oh. Right? When you heard gymnastics, you're going, don't, please don't be Simone yes. Biles. Yeah. I mean, but it could have been and the, still could be, I guess. I, you just, you never know how, how the interactions go and the. How, how much do you think it's going to affect you, me, all of us? as spectators that there aren't fans there how much do you think that will come across well i think in some sports it definitely will because you think about rio and even um again i can't remember the the girl's name but at the uh she stole the show she was uh you know there from that country um but was was it a brazilian gymnast yeah brazilian yeah. i think it was on the floor she was like yeah. had this massive floor routine and the crowd went nuts and it was um loud and and you you could hear that coming through but I, I guess for us that have been used to watching sports the whole year without fans maybe we'll be used to it but i don't know i guess maybe in swimming you don't necessarily always see True. or you hear it but Track you don't always you see do. it yes um but for some of them it's it's maybe a little bit give or take you but in the fact that we've been watching sports for a year now without it maybe we'll will be, be okay but yeah. I, I feel sorry for the athletes that that is you know such a big part of it for them to to do it in front of spectators and they feed off of that and you you never know if you get another shot at it and so for this to be maybe their one shot at, at being an olympian but i don't know the numbers but it's got to be high that most people probably only compete in one olympic games it's got to be a high number right it's gonna be over 50 percent maybe yeah, I, don't yeah. Know. I mean and we when we had jordan larson on the other day she said that she thought maybe it was better the the way that it worked out for the usa volleyball team to to have another year to kind of um you know gel and but you know i think because it got taken away a year ago probably a lot of them are appreciative that it's happening no matter how it's happening but yeah, the fact that you might be losing out on some of the best of the best athletes that aren't even going to be there potentially if, if you know, you, we've seen a couple of the NBA players that have come out and have have had to go into COVID protocol. I mean, you know, that that stinks as a spectator of the fan to have some of the, the great ones that you're signed up to and tuned in to watch that might not be there. Think about if you're a parent oh. and you have supported your child through youth gymnastics, youth swimming, whatever the case may be and your child makes it to the pinnacle of that sport, and you can't go. You uh, can't yeah. be there. 
Yeah. It's got to be heart I'm, My heart goes out to those people. Yeah. Uh, Pat Forty, who writes for Sports Illustrated, has a daughter that qualified, yeah. and he was talking Swimmer. about that, that they, don't, they, that they don't get to go. I mean, your whole life, like you said, dedicated to that. And you, you think about, oh, this is the year that they're going to make it. And, and you never know if you're going to get another chance and that you don't get that opportunity. Yeah, it's uh, devastating. All the swim practices that those parents have taken their kid to or whatever the sport may be, dropped them off, watched their event, spent time and money – to support them in their love and their passion, and then you can't be a part of it. Think I, about the broadcast, too. They have cameras dedicated that are just on families the whole time. Got to, you've got to produce it differently. Yeah. You have to produce different shows because you don't have those crowd shots. And, and to, like, fill her time and all of that, like, that you're talking about their family stories and you've got, uh, you know, ISO shots on those families, you got to figure out a way to fill that time elsewhere. Well, what's happened because of the alternates testing positive, a lot of the USA team sports, they have sent their alternates home, and that has affected the softball team, which had a former Husker and the Edwards girl. She has been sent home, so they're not even around there. So that's even taken that opportunity away. I, I, I don't even know what we're going to see Friday night in the opening ceremonies. What happens if a softball player in a week tests positive and your alternates are already back home? I, I don't know. I don't know. If you fly them over, I think you still have to quarantine again getting over there. So maybe you have to, maybe you have to forfeit. That is, you know, talk about devastating. You are an alternate, which is still, you know, you want to be on the team, but Absolutely. you're an alternate. You get to go over there, be a part. Of, you've been a part of the whole process, and you've grinded that whole way with that team. And then they were separated. They weren't staying with the team either. And then find out, hey, you, you're not even, you don't get to stay here for the games either. You got to go home. But there's no fans in the stands. I don't understand why they can't go, you know, sit by themselves in the stands. I'm with you. I, I began, you're right. We're operating under Olympic rules, Japan rules, because they're hosting the games. I, I just don't know what we're going to see Friday night for the opening ceremonies. I'm, I've been told there's no. They're not going to march in the countries. I love that. I love the pageantry of seeing the different countries and the costumes and whatever outfits they wear. And they're having a good time. And it's a big party. That's going to be totally different to not, to not have that. I mentioned the word forfeit. I want to get to that. This is, this is the F word that I've talked about for months, Jessica, <laughs> about sports. And it drove me crazy last year that the Big Ten Conference didn't have some things in place that if a team couldn't compete, they should have to forfeit. And it happened to several different Husker teams where Nebraska was ready to compete couldn't play because somebody else decided they didn't want to play. Well, that came up today as Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, had his kickoff speech to start their media days. Kevin Warren will do the same thing in a couple of days, and I can't wait to hear what he has to say. But he talked about that his message to schools has been, we expect you to play. We expect you to play a schedule. We're not going to shuffle teams around. If you can't play one week, move you to a different week. And that we are going to talk about forfeiting games. If you can't, I'm okay with that. I think that's fine. Uh, me too. Absolutely. You can't, you know, when, when you got other teams that might rely on this game being played and then maybe that's a difference between them having, you know, a certain amount of wins or they need, they need to play this team to potentially knock off a, get a signature win. You never know. Like it's, it's not fair to the opposing teams that, you know, and then having to move things around and, and figure change schedules around. No, I mean, it's if you can't fill it, you can't figure out a way, then, yeah, that's a forfeit. I, I'm okay with that, too. I am, too. I, you know, what he's doing, and all the commissioners, I think, are going to do this at these when they have these big platforms is push people to get vaccinated. He said today that six of their 14 football teams have reached an 80% mark for vaccinations. And I've had the question here. How many Huskers have been? I don't know. I don't know the number to that. We'll poke around, see if we can find that number. I don't know what the number is for on the Husker football team is right now. But Sankey said that number needs to grow and grow rapidly. He wants to get people above that 85% threshold uh, so that they feel like they're kind of insulated from outbreaks during the season. So I'm sure this is going to be a topic over the next month. Have there been anything, has there been anything that comes out as far as testing goes, if it's still going to be, you know, a... We're waiting. Yeah. I think we may hear that from Kevin Warren yep. on Thursday. Kevin Warren launches the Big Ten Media Days on Thursday from Indianapolis. Those are the kind of things I can't wait to hear what he says. What is he going to say? Are they going to continue testing? Multiple Expensive. times a week or once a week? You know, If you're vaccinated, it? you still have to be tested? I, I, those are things I, I'm anxious to hear from the commission. Which, uh, yeah, what? where was it where is like if, oh, we'll let the 
College World Series where they weren't vaccinated until they State. had um, yeah. somebody test positive and then they had to get vaccinated. Is that going to be the same rules that apply? I don't know. It's going to be fascinating. I know we all want this pandemic to be behind us, and for the most part, it is. We're still dealing with it. I still think that there's going to be some bumps in the road. Heck, we saw it coming out of the All-Star break. The Yankees and Red Sox had a game postponed because of six Yankees testing positive. And as we began this segment, the Olympians that are still uh, under the microscope and getting getting uh, tested and sent home in some cases because they've tested positive to this. So we all want it behind us. I get it. I do too. But I don't think we're quite done with it, unfortunately. Yeah. And, you know, it's also kind of, if it's still going to be around, at what point are you still, you know, forcing players to sit out? If it's, you right. know, I mean, if it's something that's going to be around and continue to stay around, like the flu, is it's is it going to be treated like that? Or is it you're going to continue to have to miss games and weeks at a time every time? Great I, questions. And, yeah, you're right. I mean, I... Last year, the Big Ten was as stringent as any league in the country with what they did and how long, if you tested positive, how long was the window you had to sit. Um, so And the maybe, people that you came in contact with and all of that, yeah. Yeah, it's just, oh, so hopefully we'll get some answers later in the week from the Big Ten commissioner, but the SEC commissioner today, pretty strong, saying if teams can't field a team for a game, we're not rescheduling. You forfeit, you're out, you move on. He also pushed pretty hard on some diversity issues within that league, saying that, the SEC is woefully behind in diversity hires, so he really pushed stress that at his, at his State of the Union address for the SEC there today. All right, SEC began today, Big Ten later in the week. Last week, our old friends at the Big 12 Conference had their media days down in Arlington, Texas. When we come back, Blair Kirkhoff, who's covered Big 12 sports for decades from the Kansas City Star, he'll join us. We'll hit on some of the highlights from that coming up next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet or your boss to see your criminal history do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest get a ride a dui costs more than you think brought to you by the ndot highway safety office does it really matter where beef comes from Meet the facts. Fact. High V Choice Reserve beef comes from the Midwest, so you get only the highest quality beef raised on family farms here in the heartland. Where do the other guys get their beef? We're not sure either. Get the facts at meetthefacts.hyvee.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Stadium seats may have been replaced with recliners. Tailgates outside the stadium may have been swapped for the ones in the backyard. And thousands of screaming fans have been replaced by one screaming baby. The only thing that hasn't changed is us watching the game together. It's game time, baby. Show off your Husker team spirit during your next virtual watch party. Visit Cox.com slash Huskers to take a selfie with Herbie. And don't forget to share. Watch together, cheer together, take a selfie together, even if you're not actually together. Cox, bringing us closer. Still waiting for your stimulus check? Don't wait for the government. Get the SOS stimulus package right now. For a limited time, get $2,000 off a qualifying York system. York products are all proudly made in the USA. Call SOS, a trustworthy company since 1950. SOS is a family-owned third-generation company. Get you and the loved ones comfortable again with SOS. SOS. When do you think you'll be done with our kitchen renovation? Uh, well, ma'am, the Italian marble countertops will take a while to get in. No problem. In the meantime, you can start on the spiral staircase. Um, uh, what? If you win Mega Millions from the Nebraska Lottery with a jackpot that starts in the millions in drawings Tuesdays and Fridays, 
you can afford to go a little mega. Um, so you want us to build a spiral staircase? Well, how else are we supposed to get up to the helipad? Oh, good. My husband's home. Top prize odds, one in 302 million. Back to Adventures in Technology. Oh, no! Our IT hero is caught in the jagged jaws of ransomware attacks and phishing scams. Help! Wait! It's Marco's Network Security Solutions to the rescue with life-saving ways to detect hungry cyber villains and stop them cold in their tracks. With Marco's Network Security Solutions, our IT hero lives to surf another day. For more successful network security adventures, go to marconet.com. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're back sports finally here on a Monday night. In Big Ten Media Days coming up on Thursday, Friday in Indianapolis. Looking forward to hearing what all the coaches have to say on that. Last week, it was the Big 12 having their media days down in Arlington, Texas at Jerry World. And Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star was down there covering that. Good evening, Blair. How are you? I'm great, Greg. How you doing? How many conference uh, events like that have you covered? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I, I think I've been to all of them at one point. Um, I, I remember covering the big 10 several years before Nebraska joined, uh, up in, up in Chicago and, uh, having a good time uh, there. Uh, the, there's nothing like the SECs though, the, the, the extravaganza that is SEC media days, which started today, by the way, four days and, um, uh, and, and just fans galore. It really is a, a, a sight to behold, but I got to tell you, um, it was great just to be back at a media day <laughs> after missing out on all of that a year ago, not to mention covering the games in person, just to see coaches and players uh, and, and other writers. It was, uh, there was kind of a buzz in, in the, uh, in the air and, and they do it, the big 12, they do it on the, on the playing field at AT&T stadium and in Arlington. So that was kind of cool too. Yeah, neat stuff. Well, Oklahoma's getting all the headlines. Where, where do you come down on the Sooners? What, how do you rate their chances of maybe being a playoff team in a few months? Yeah, you, you know, it's funny. You usually don't get new information at media days. It's just maybe stuff that you heard in, in after the season and in the spring training, maybe a little amplified a bit. But w one thing you can pick up on a media days is the, the level of confidence with which you hear coaches and athletes and – and, and Lincoln Riley was being really cautiously confident about about this year's team because the he got the question about getting over the hump and you know for a lot of programs getting over the hump means you know big, surpassing 500 or or finishing in the upper division for Oklahoma that means winning a, a college football playoff game because it's just assumed that the Sooners are going to be in the college football playoff and uh, and he, I, he answered just as diplomatically as you expect he would. But I, I do think that this is an Oklahoma team that is probably closer to being a national championship team than, than year that his previous teams that, that lost out in the, in the, in the uh, semifinals. Oscars will face Oklahoma in mid September, renewing their longtime rivalry. The other kind of sexy pick all summer has been Iowa state. Are they to that level in your eyes? Where, where do you, where do you view coach Campbell's program? They bring a lot of people back from the from the most successful season that that the program ever had to to play in the Big 12 championship game and have the ball just down one possession at, at the end against the Sooners and then go off to the Fiesta Bowl and and really handle easily handle an Oregon team. I know we all know how unique the 2020 season was, but. I think the fact that, that Matt Campbell and that program played as well as it did, uh, was as organized as it was, just proved what a, what a terrific coach and a great staff he is and a great staff that he has. Um, they, they didn't let the, the, the pandemic affect them the way I saw it affect other programs. They seem to have their, 
their ducks in a row, if you will, and um, and, and and they they, they played r- really good football. They, Brock Purdy back and uh, really good offensive line returning. I I don't see him beating Oklahoma, but uh, but look, they've uh, they've beaten Oklahoma in the past and they've beaten everybody in the past in the, in the Big Twelve. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm a big big Matt Campbell fan and, and think that he's. Um, he's as good as it gets in college football right now. Busy with Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star. He was in Arlington last week covering the Big 12 media days. The Big Ten's coming up later this week. The biggest offseason move in the league, Blair, was was the hiring of Sarkeesian at Texas. How did he come across? What'd you, what was your feel about him? You know, you, you like to, you know, everybody starts, you know, 0-0, zero, zero, right? And everybody's undefeated at media days. And uh, But I, I just... He, I, he was a little too canned for me, a um, little too predictable, not, um, you know, not not interesting enough. Look, it's Texas. They've, he's a good coach. They're going to have good players. It's just a matter of you know putting it all together in Austin. I don't think this is the year it's going to happen, though. I just think that they start from a position of where they're behind the Sooners and and Iowa State, and maybe even TCU. I think that's the sleeper pick in the in the Big Twelve. Mm. So uh, I, I don't think that I don't think this is going to be the year for Texas. But I, I, does he get it done eventually? I, maybe I, I don't know. It's it's you know I thought uh, I thought Herman, the the, you know, the previous coach, was was a good hire for Texas, and he ultimately couldn't get it done. So it's been a tough go for the Longhorns since Mac Brown was kind of forced out back, uh, you know, several years ago. And, and, and nobody's waiting around for, for Texas. You know, they're, everybody's looking to be better. Oklahoma State's had some good seasons. Like I said, I think PCU's poised to have a really good year. And, and Oklahoma's Oklahoma. What would be a good year for Texas? Eight wins? Well, well this, this year, yeah, I would say if they could get to eight or you know, nine with a bold victory, that would uh, that, that would be good. I, I know that a few years ago was it after the 2018 season that they beat uh, Georgia in the Sugar Bowl and kind of declared that Texas was back and um, uh, you know probably obviously prematurely, but uh, but I, I, if you look at what Texas has accomplished uh, in the last seven eight years, there, it just hadn't been much and um, just probably a little over 500 in conference play and one. One year in the, in the Big 12 championship game, which is no more than Iowa State or TCU, and um, so it's just you know it, it's 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 still a work in progress at Texas. I know Texas fans don't want to hear that, but that's that's just how it is there now. Um, it's going to take it's going to take not only the talent, but coaching that talent up, and uh, we'll we'll see if Sark is the guy. I know that. A lot of people believe in him, and he has a good track record. So we'll see about him. But I don't think I'd jump on the Texas bandwagon this year. Very good. And busy and Blair Kirkhoff of the Kansas City Star here on Sports Nightly. Guy that has some Husker ties is Lance Leipold, who's the new head coach at Kansas. They apparently had some problems getting there. Is that right? Yes. Uh, Kansas uh, did not get there. Uh, there. There was a storm that came through. Eastern Kansas on the morning that uh, Kansas, this was Thursday morning, last Thursday, and Kansas was supposed to appear at Big 12 Media Days uh, or later that day. But the window of opportunity for the plane to leave was uh, was such that um, it, it couldn't, and it was grounded. And uh, and so Kansas had to do it all virtual, which you know, which is not new. We've been we've been do, conducting all the interviews here lately. But it was a shame for Lance Leipold and. And the Kansas players uh, and, and the traveling party, you know, it was it was you know you, you get one chance to make the first impression, and I think he would have done well. He did do well in his, you know, in his virtual meeting, and and uh, and you're right, Husker ties and UNO ties, and I, I think he is um, I think he's the right type of coach for for Kansas. Will he get it done? You know, nobody's gotten it done there since Mark Mangino, you know, and it's, it's four coaches and counting, but I think. He's the right type of coach KU needs, um, a guy who doesn't have aspirations for the following job and is not a you know, bit of a, a star coach like Les Miles or Charlie Weiss was. So a lot of eyes on Kansas to see how, to see how Lance Leipold does this year. Yeah. We, we were talking earlier in our program, Blair, about Greg Sankey. The SEC commissioner made remarks today. Bob Bowlesby did the same thing a week ago. What were your takeaways 
from the commissioner's comments. Yeah, very interesting that, um, uh, you know, it's funny, you know, we've had a summer of pro sports and, you know, in here in Kansas City, of course, that means the Royals and, 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 and the Chiefs camps. And we ask coaches and athletes about vaccines and vaccinations and uh, and they all are guarded about it. You know, they, you know the, the ones that we talk to say, yes, I've been vaccinated, but I but I you know, it's my choice. And it's a personal choice and and all that. But Bob Bowlesby let off the Big 12 media day last week and Greg Sankey did the same th- same thing today, even more strongly worded saying get the vaccine um there is not going to be in a there's not going to be a situation this year that if you have a a, a, a covid breakout on your team and don't have the numbers uh there's not going to be a rescheduling of that game you're going to forfeit that game this year um the vaccines available easily available and they need to get up to the 85 percent threshold on teams and i guess we found out today that six of the 14 sec teams are there we didn't get specific numbers with the big 12 last week except for kansas state which said it was close to 80 percent so uh, i think that's a message you're going to hear later this week at the big 10 also at the pac-12 and the acc as well i commissioners are coming out strong maybe saying the things that coaches and players won't say or, or can't say how much playoff talk did did the commissioner get into you know, that, that's interesting. I, I sat down and talked with Bob Bowlesby uh, specifically about the the playoff talk because he was on the subcommittee, the the four member committee that uh, you know that created the twelve team proposal that I think will become a reality here in a couple of years. So, uh, but but the coaches, uh, they, they, not as much. There was not as much conversation about that as maybe nil. You know, name, image, and likeness that. Uh, maybe and then maybe because that's the the fresher story, right? That's the one that's a little more recent. The playoff was announced a month or so ago, and look, that's a that's a huge thing for for college football, and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great for the game, and uh, uh, and, and I love it. But uh, but NIL affects you know everybody, and uh, you know all all sports, not just football, but all sports at all levels. And I, that was a that was a more popular topic at at, big, at least at Big Twelve Media Days. Yeah, um, horns down, huh? The Greg Burks made quite a <laughs> thing with talking about that. That got all the national headlines. Yeah, I mean, every year, every year we get he gets uh, the the Big Twelve official uh, supervisor of officials gets asked about horns down, and every year it's from uh, from the Austin American Statesman asking the question, um, uh, sort of a once and for all, uh, will horns down be a penalty? And it's the same answer every year. It's um, if it's done in a taunting way, it's a penalty because it's a taunting penalty, and it doesn't just have to be horns down. It could be, you know, any one of the Texas schools hand gestures. You know, if you do it in a taunting way, you're going to get penalized for it. But I think just horns down by itself, they, the the, the uh, Burks left a little wiggle room for that. Not necess- not necessarily a penalty unless it's in a taunting manner. Blair, I think you probably go back to the early and mid 90s you you do you remember covering Trev Alberts Nebraska's new AD I do I absolutely do I uh, remember his career and um and what a what a terrific player he was in fact we chatted a little bit with Ed Stewart down at um down in Arlington of course he's an official with the Big 12 and uh and, and played with Trev so I was I, I was really happy to 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 see that hire and um, and look, I, I, I think a lot of Trev, I, I think he'll do a terrific job there. And, you know, I, I know that Nebraska hasn't had the success in football and men's basketball recently that, that it desired, not recently, but over the, you know, over the course of several years, but in terms of a lineup, an athletic department lineup of Trev Alberts and Scott Frost and Fred Hoiberg, I'm not sure you could hand pick a better lineup for, for Nebraska than the neck group right there. So I, I just wish him the best. Very good. Blair, great to hear your voice. We'll, we'll need to catch up sometime. I appreciate the insight on, on what you saw last week in Arlington. Thank you. Absolutely. Great talking to you, Craig. There he is, Blair Kirkhoff, the Kansas City Star, joining us on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you in part by the Woodhouse Auto family, bringing you more choices in brands, locations, and service. Experience the difference. Purchase with confidence. This is Woodhouse. All right, phone lines open for you, 402-413-2400, either with a call or a text. Jessica will join me next. So 
when do you think you'll be done with our kitchen renovation? Uh, well, ma'am, the Italian marble countertops will take a while to get in. No problem. In the meantime, you can start on the spiral staircase. Um, uh, what? If you win Mega Millions from the Nebraska Lottery with a jackpot that starts in the millions in drawings Tuesdays and Fridays, you can afford to go a little mega. Um, so you want us to build a spiral staircase? Well, how else are we supposed to get up to the helipad? Oh, good. My husband's home. Top prize odds, one in 302 million. Husker fans, stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following The Big Red on Facebook and Twitter. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding NU athletics, including game results, ticket promotions, and Husker prizes. Log on to also follow several sports-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Become a fan today at Facebook.com slash Huskers and Twitter.com slash Huskers to join and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop with confidence at Woodhouse Ford. Take advantage of our current offers and vast inventory selection with features you want at a smart price. Schedule a test drive today or shop online with our streamlined sales process. We make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in person or online at woodhouseford.com. Choose your experience and find your next vehicle at Woodhouse Ford in Blair, Omaha, or Plattsmouth. Back to Adventures in Technology. Look away! A runaway train of IT problems is bearing down on our brave IT hero. But wait! It's Marco's technology assessment to the rescue with life-saving IT strategies. Our hero's technology issues are derailed. A tip of the hat to Marco, and our hero rides into the virtual sunset of our WebEx background. For more successful IT adventures, go to marconet.com. As the official bank of Husker Nation, FNBO invites you to take the game with you with the free Husker Visa debit card. Tied to your checking account, the Husker Visa debit card allows fans to show their Husker pride all year long. Get your free Husker Visa debit card today at any FNBO branch or visit fnbo.com slash Huskers. FNBO, the official bank of Husker Nation. Member FDIC. Because Ford trucks and SUVs are built to help you every day, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. And now you can get great offers on the entire Ford lineup. Come see how at your local Ford store. Based on 2019 calendar year total sales. There's a Ford built for everyone. Whether it's the latest driver assist technologies, room to fit the whole family, or the power you need on the job site, Ford has you covered. Head to your Midwest Ford dealers today to find great deals on the right vehicle for you. Still waiting for your stimulus check? Don't wait for the government. Get the SOS Stimulus Package right now. For a limited time, get $2,000 off a qualifying York system. York products are all proudly made in the USA. Call SOS, a trustworthy company since 1950. SOS is a family-owned third-generation company. Get you and the loved ones comfortable again with SOS. SOS to the rescue. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. Buckle up and put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you here on Sports Island. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. Thanks again to Blair Kirkhoff for spending some time with us from the Big 12 Media Days. We'll try to get somebody from the SEC once theirs wraps up later on in the week. Where do you come down on a horns down deal? Pretty crazy, isn't it? I, I don't know if you saw Barry Switzer's um quote about it it was like the barry switzer of all barry switzer quotes he said if someone gives you the bird you give it back it's kind of <laughs> like the horns it's the same thing when someone gives you the horns you give them the horns down everybody does it that plays and, texas right and have for years and when i went to the college world series up in omaha when texas was playing literally everybody that wasn't a texas fan was doing the horns down right 
that's not a Big 12 thing. It's not a former, you know, teams that play them thing. It is everybody that knows Texas knows they do the horns up, so you do the horns down. If you have a, a you know, a hand signal that is capable of going down, you're kind of setting yourself up for that. How do you, you know, like we were talking about the horns, fro horn frogs. Yeah. It's like a or the bear someone crawl told me it was, you or... can't do, really do that upside down, you know. So it's like it's your fault for making something that can go upside up, down, up or down. <laughs> I think, and and uh, we'll have some people that'll call me on this. North Dakota State's the bison. Well, their horns, I think, are down. <laughs> I think bison's horns go down. So I, I don't know how you flag that. I don't know how you call a penalty on that. And didn't it happen to West Virginia? I want to yes, say yes, and it cost them the game. It cost them the game. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, just turn and do it to the fans. You're probably all right, but don't do it to the – don't taunt the the guys that you're playing against, and you'll be fine. Just, I mean, I, I get we want to have good sportsmanship. I, I'm all for that. But let the kids be kids a little bit here in this thing, I know. right? I know. And it's Texas. I don't think anybody cares about the <laughs> horns down except for Texas people. If it's the whole country united on horns down – Let's just roll with Let's it, okay? Let's go with that. Yeah. All right. Well, it was great to hear from from Blair. And, again, SEC started today. He's right. They they, they are their media days on steroids. Oh, it that. is nuts. And it's, it's like, like four, all day coverage. For like four days. Because they only do like three schools a day. So they expand it out all week. I told you. And, of course, they were just going overboard showing this graphic all day. I told you about this before we went on air about the, the chances for uh, teams to go to the college football playoff. And it was like 94% for the SEC to send a team and to have multiple teams, it's like 31%, ACC 82%, 81% for the Big 12, 63% for the Big 10 to get a team in. So, um, but yeah, they, it, that was according to the all-state playoff predictor, but they yeah. had that up and they were kind of going and on and on about that. Yeah. Goes along with wins and losses. But it's typical for the SEC. I mean, right. and that's a, the graphic that they're showing at their media day coverage all day. Bama and Georgia, the two favorites in that league and they're in different divisions. A lot so of love for Texas A&M too. Yeah, it's a little early, I think, I, for I Jim agree. Rose team. Yeah. Trev Alberts just tweeted, one day in and I can assure you the saying is true, there is no place like Nebraska. How about that? There you who go. He, who launched his Twitter account I like know. twelve hours ago or something like that, right? I know he had like three thousand followers in five minutes. <laughs> Good for him. And great to hear Blair kind of reference covering Trev as an athlete here in Nebraska and how up uh, you know the and, and we had the text earlier about the, all the optimism that we saw in the Big Red Blitz last month, and now with a new AD, can this continue? I, I, I sense that. I feel that. You've been around here a month or so. You feel that, too, from all the coaches. I do. Of all the sports. Yes, all, across the board. And it's, I mean, I'm telling you, the vibe of this place, I love it. I mean, I am coming into it, and you can tell there's a level of excitement, uh, a lot of positivity, and, and there's a lot of exciting things going on. NIL, the fact that Nebraska was at the forefront, that was huge. You know, that was really big. There were a lot of guys, that, a lot of schools, a lot of programs that were trying to play catch-up for what Nebraska had done. And then, you know, the, the new facilities and just the, just the whole overall um, vibe from – this athletics department as a whole it's it's it it's a good feeling there's a lot of positivity a lot to be excited about yeah and i said this earlier in the show but, but I, i'm gonna repeat myself this place needs stability at the top and i think trev can provide that moving forward i think he's 50 51 years old he can be here 10 12 years that's what we need and he said that this was the only job that he would have le left uh, yeah. you know omaha for and so you know he's not trying to and, and I said this, too. A lot of times it's you're looking for the next step up, right? Where Where's your career going next with a lot of these athletic directors? But not only is, you know, you get a feeling like this, this is he wants to, you know, stay here and, and be here for a while. But the ties that he has to Nebraska is a, not a lot. Not a lot of athletic directors have that as well, where they right. have a lot of investments personally in a place like the way that Trev has Nebraska. Were you surprised how emotional he was? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, and he said that he said, you know, some of my teammates and my kids are going to give me a hard time about oh, yeah. it. But like that to me, as a, someone that works here now for, to, for my boss to have that kind of, uh, emotion about a place, you know, he cares and you want that in a leader. You want someone that cares that deeply about the place that you're taking over as a leader that, you know, 
you know that he wants to do good by this place. Very genuine. Yeah. It really came across that way. You know, it wasn't. He wouldn't wasn't, have cried if he if he didn't have to. I mean, like that was not a. Right. Now, I, that's what he said. My teammates and kids are going to give you a hard time about it. He would not have gotten emotional. He said, I didn't think this was going to happen. So. And I've seen people try to turn those tear ducts on, right? And it's oh. just not, you're like, that's not really <laughs> right. Probably some Hollywood types that do that type of thing. Hey, buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Need to step aside, get a break in. Still time. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, 402-413-2400. Our last segment of our Monday show coming up next. Does it really matter where beef comes from? Meet the facts. Fact. High V Choice Reserve beef comes from the Midwest. So you get only the highest quality beef raised on family farms here in the heartland. Where do the other guys get their beef? We're not sure either. Get the facts at meetthefacts.hyvee.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. So when do you think you'll be done with our kitchen renovation? Uh, well, ma'am, the Italian marble countertops will take a while to get in. No problem. In the meantime, you can start on the spiral staircase. Um, uh, what? If you win Mega Millions from the Nebraska Lottery with a jackpot that starts in the millions in drawings Tuesdays and Fridays... You can afford to go a little mega. Um, so you want us to build a spiral staircase? Well, how else are we supposed to get up to the helipad? Oh, good. My husband's home. Top prize odds, one in 302 million. Nebraska Athletics are hiring event staff for the 2021 home football season. Our number one requirement, be passionate about Husker football and ready to provide the ultimate fan experience for the greatest fans in college football. As part of the event staff, you serve Husker Nation and check out live game action inside Memorial Stadium. Apply right now and help kick off the Husker football season by working the Garth Brooks concert. For more information and to apply, visit huskers.com slash event staff. Go Big Red. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family, bringing you more choices in brands, locations, and service. Experience the difference. Purchase with confidence. This is Woodhouse. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. No NBA tonight. Game six tomorrow night. You are rooting for the Suns. You want a game seven. I do want a game seven. I thought the Suns, especially I think a lot of people did after they jumped out to the 2-0 lead, were going to run away with it. But I more so, I want Chris Paul to win a championship, but I more so love game seven and let's extend this season as long as possible more than I am for the Suns. They're running up close to the draft. Yeah. It's what next Thursday, July 29th. So same day as our fan day is the draft. So yeah, game seven would be what Thursday. Yes. Is that right? I don't have the schedule. Yes. I d- yes. It's, it's Thursday. So Tuesday, Thursday, I believe. So they're back in Milwaukee tomorrow night. The Bucks can clinch it at home. If they can get a win tomorrow, the Brewers are also at home tomorrow and they move their game. The Brewers are playing the Royals tomorrow. They were supposed to play a night game. You play baseball night games usually on Tuesday night. They moved it to the afternoons. They didn't want to compete with the Bucks. They go, heck, we want to watch the game too. That's awesome. I love that. I mean. It's really well done. Uh, and, uh, you know, a city that is all about, you've seen the live feeds of fans cheering in this, you know, in the streets. And um, that's the only thing is if they, if the Bucks clinch in Phoenix, it does. I, you don't love that when right. teams clinch on the road, but. I I think selfishly I'd rather see seven games as opposed to the Bucks clinching right. at home. That, I said that same thing back in May. Husker baseball clinched the Big Ten and they were on the road. I'm like, oh, I wish that could have been at Haymarket Park in front of the fans. But you don't. You get it when you get it. Yes. If you, if you can finish it off, you do it. You don't take chances and you move on with that. So game six tomorrow night in the NBA that could end it with their draft coming up in a, a little bit of a week again. Fan day. For all of you, 5.30 to 7.30 on the 29th at Memorial Stadium. Make your plans. Get your strategy plotted out. Where are you going to go? They're going to put out a map next week. You can figure out what posi- – usually you can get to two position groups. So you got okay. you got to plot this, Jessica. Yeah. you got to come in and go, okay, you got to – it's just like getting ready for a game. you got to have your plan. I'm going to go to this place first and then hit that one. Because if you come in and just willy-nilly it, you're, you're going to get shut out. You also got to think, too, If okay, if I go to a really popular line True. first and then let's figure the out. You get. Or, yeah, or maybe I can uh, sneak in on a not not as big name. Guys, but you never know right. whose autograph you might be getting. That's right. You know? could, in two years, they could be the star. Yeah. And you had them as a freshman. So, 
you know, when the maps will come out early next week, you guys can all <laughs> strategize and pick out your – because sometimes if you go to one big line, that may be the only one you get in those two hours because that thing I flies I mean, hopefully by. it will be down there and our line will be just as long as the quarterback line, you know? Our People. line is as long as it is right now. <laughs> that's what our, our line is. Yeah, that's that's it. That's the, the final thing for that. Um, all right, time for weekend winners. You want to lead us off? Sure. What do you got? Okay, well, it's not necessarily a weekend winner as it was uh, winter today, so I just kind of took sure, it. Sure, fine. How about Alonzo Verge Jr. on his first day of practice almost breaking Twitter? In a half an hour, <laughs> hour and a half, or I think it was like less than an hour, over 40,000 impressions just on Twitter. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you missed the video, check it out on uh, Nebraska Mids Basketball. Uh, he splits a couple defenders behind the back pass, beautiful feed, and, you know, said that, been told lots of energy that he brings are really excited think they got a still in him i mean this team is going to be fun and the way the excitement behind this team already and then you know his first day he's already breaking the internet i gotta give a shout out to alex uh for her oh my goodness i asked him how to say his name for her lick her lick for her lick there you go there you go um you got to give a shout out to him because the he could the way he followed it with the video camera as well because you could <laughs> he could have very easily gotten lost on that but a uh, big shout out to him as well. I've said it all along, but Nick and uh, Burkhardt and Alex and and their team is phenomenal. Um, so very he, good. He uh, I don't know if my winner is Al, uh, Alonzo Verge or, or Alex uh, Rehrlich. Yeah. So I'll give a co winner there. Very good. I'm told season tickets have gone out in the mail for folks. So, yeah, you want to jump on board. It's going to be a fun team to watch when they get cranked up in November. I love golf. So my winner is Colin Morikawa. Uh, just how dominant he was at the Open wrapped up. I watched a lot of golf all weekend. The great thing about the Open is you can watch golf in the morning and you get the rest of your afternoon to do things because of the time difference over there. But he's won two majors before the age of 25. Oh, only one other guy in history has done that. Tiger Woods. So this kid, I love his demeanor, Jessica. I do too. I think he's a nice young man. Everybody in the tour raves about him. He's like Trev Alberts. He's very genuine. I just think he's really good for the sport. I do too. Um, I do. I uh, should talk about game seven, but there's nothing more I love more than playoffs in, in golf majors. So I was kind of pushing you for Jordan Spieth to, to, speed to you know, catch him. But I do like uh, Colin. I think he is fantastic. You can tell how well respected he is already on the tour as well by some of those older guys and the the congrats, congratulations that he gets and and the the some of the guys that have been around and been on the tour how much they they like him as well, which I think says a lot about a guy. Sure it does. Cal Bear is where he went to college, but Morikawa wins his second major. He won the PGA last September when the golf season got all messed up because of COVID. So he's won two majors within 12 months. Uh, pretty impressive. Golf. A lot of those golfers. Top one, notch ones are headed to the Olympics. Golf is now part of the Olympics, so you'll see a lot of those guys in the coming weeks with that. Then you have the FedEx Cup playoffs. Just glad Bryson uh, DeChambeau didn't win it. <laughs> I kind of like Bryson a little bit, although it's been tough to like Bryson the last couple of weeks. He's really he did play well yesterday. He shot a sixty five. Is he like he figured out his driver a little bit better? How about that little deal? <laughs> and then his Cobra comes right back after him. That's pretty cool. Mark on our text line said, hey, Trav was one of the greatest pass rushers ever at Nebraska. Him being around is going to help, along with increased presence by Jason Peter and Jay Foreman. Couldn't agree more, Mark. That is a fantastic way. I think a lot of people forget how good a linebacker Trev Alberts was. The Butkus Award winner. He was a tremendous football player at Nebraska. All right, there we go. Tomorrow we're hoping... I always hate to tease things, but we're hoping to talk to some men's basketball players. They have a media availability tomorrow, so we're hoping to do that tomorrow night on the program as we uh, move you through the last part of November. Every time I do that, you never know. So we'll dangle that out there for everybody. Yes. Very good. Welcome back. Good to be back. Good to be back in the saddle. Hey, buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Thanks to Mike, to Andrew, to Jessica, to all of you for listening tonight. We'll do it again tomorrow. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop with confidence at Woodhouse Buick GMC and find your next vehicle. Our knowledgeable sales team is eager to help you find a vehicle. Plus, get you on the road faster with our streamlined sales and buying process that you can start online. New Buick and GMC models with the features you want at a smart price. Visit our indoor showroom or shop online anytime at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com.
experience the difference and shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. On May 7th and 8th, Nebraska celebrated its largest May graduating class in university history. 3,594 degrees were awarded to Nebraska graduates in ceremonies at Pinnacle Bank Arena and Memorial Stadium. Along with receiving their diplomas, graduates also heard inspiring speeches from notable Nebraskans, including legendary coach Tom Osborne. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Does it really matter where beef comes from? Meet the facts. Fact. High V Choice Reserve beef comes from the Midwest. So you get only the highest quality beef raised on family farms here in the heartland. Where do the other guys get their beef? We're not sure either. Get the facts at meetthefacts.hyvee.com. <laughs> 